Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. And today we're going to be doing another best of one standard event with another interesting list that I found on untapped.gg. So before we get started, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing my channel with a friend of yours. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back and supporting me. It really does mean the world to me. Thank you guys. I really appreciate you. Um, there will be a deck list in the description, both on untapped.gg and moxfield.com. And then there will also be a list of my playlists. So if you want to see other videos that I've done and see more of my content, you can check them out there. Um, I also want to give a big thank you to all of my members um, at all of the levels. And I really appreciate you guys so much. Um, you are kind of what helped make my channel possible. And if you do want to become a member and help support my channel, um, here's exactly how you do that for as little as $1.99 a month to get early access to my content. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the... Uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the deck. So this is another list that I found on the untapped.gg kind of find decks um, option, which is really helpful actually. It's super handy and just to kind of jump in, what I do is I'll typically look at decks that have a win rate. Um, they're sorted by win rate and then that have at least 200 matches um, in the ranks of platinum or higher. And so that's kind of how I found this most recent list here. And so I've been sort of having a lot of fun doing kind of like a series of these and then running them through standard events just to see if you guys want to craft them or not. Um, but this is the deck I'm looking at here, Martyr Humans. It has a 58.1% win rate with 780 matches logged. So I thought, you know, why not? Let's check it out. Um, hopping into it here at a glance, you have a lot of the same cards here that you're seeing in like the Mono White Humans deck. You've got four copies of Recruitment Officer to kind of help you go along and also have some nice threats here at the beginning. Uh, two copies of Lunark Veteran. Um, I guess they decided not to run the full playset, although I think that's kind of wild, but I guess we'll see. And then three copies of Thalia, Guardian of Thraven. Completely agree here. This is a fantastic card in any deck that has um, sort of a lower number of spells just because it can punish such a huge um, section of the, the metagame. Uh, one copy of Kellen Daring Traveler is like a nice value card, and I can definitely see this card being great. I've run it before. Part of the reason why I think I don't run it in mono white humans is I'm just trying to focus so much on just the uh, the lifelink aspect against like mono red and stuff like that. But yeah, we'll see how it does. Four copies of Get Lost, a nice sort of catch-all um, removal here. It does give the opponent a little bit of advantage if they can use that in some meaningful way, like in aggressive decks, but it hits enchantments, creatures, and planes planeswalkers at instant speed, so you know, very versatile. Uh, four copies of Copper Coat Vanguard, just to pump up all the other humans, which totally makes sense in this deck. And then it has a full playset of Inti Seneschal of the Sun, which I find really interesting. Uh, this is definitely a very powerful card. Um, I've never seen it run as a full playset before, but, you know, I could sort of see, see an argument for it just because you can discard extra copies and then get the value out of it. So, yeah, excited to see how it performs. Um, Basically allowing your guys to go tall here with Trample is a really nice thing to have access to in like a traditional like mono white deck. But this is, you know, with all three colors, has some more, more access. Um, and then we have in the three drop slot, three copies of Adeline Resplendent Cathar. Completely makes sense. This card is a total bomb. It should be run in basically every aggressive white deck. Um, surprised not to see a full playset, but they're probably just making room for some of the other cards here. Um, they do run a full playset of Anin Pakal, Thousandth Moon. So this really helps you kind of build up a huge amount of advantage in army um, by making uh, lots of little 1-1 artifact 
um, gnome tokens that are tapped and attacking. So yeah, this is definitely one we've seen before in Boros Humans. I'm interested to see how it does because um, part of the, the danger around Anim Bakal is that it only has a two toughness you know, right off the jump. And so it's very weak to removal. Maybe that's why they want to run a full play set. And then they have this new card here that I haven't actually run before. Ishin, two heavens is one. So this is the full Mardu colors, which is really cool because if a attacking creature causes your triggered ability um, of a permanent that you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So this kind of like makes me think a little bit like of Delny, except it has better stats. Um, it's a little bit more narrow, but you know, you've got Adeline and Anim Pakal, which both benefit from Ishin by making additional um, additional threats. Then it also works with Ish, uh, with Inti, Seneschal of the Sun. So it, it does have some nice stuff that it's doing here. And then in addition, they have two copies of Mishra claimed by Gix. So this is a four mana, three, five legendary. Whenever you attack, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life where X is the number of attacking creatures. And so this is a nice combo here with both Adeline, Anim Pakal, Ishin, um, <clears throat> if Mishra claimed by Gix and a creature named Phyrexian Dragon Engine are attacking, then the, and you both own and control them, exile them, then meld them into Mishra Lost to Phyrexia, it enters the battlefield tap and attacking. Okay, so they're, they're not running the, the full combo with it with the Dragon Engine, but just sort of the top half of the ability, which is still very powerful. And then it also runs four copies of Roaming Throne, uh, which would be naming human. And so this is another way to kind of like double up the effect of the Adeline, the Anim Bacall. I'm a little interested because this this deck doesn't run any copies of Brutal Cathar, um, you know, which obviously combos super well with Roaming Throne, but I think they're kind of, you know, maybe trying to be a little bit less on the removal side and more on sort of like the, the strict value side off of like making all these attackers. And so we'll see how it does. For the land count, you've got 23 land. And then they're running two copies of Plaza of Heroes, as there are quite a few legendaries here. Um, the full play set of Cavern of Souls and Secluded Courtyard, which makes sense. And then they have kind of a smattering of the other lands. Uh, notably, they are only running uh, Iganjo for kind of the extra kind of effect lands. Uh, they're not running either the black or the red one. And again, that kind of makes sense. You really only have just a couple red sources here and very few black sources. So it's basically, for the most part, a mono white deck. Um, but yeah, excited. Let's go ahead and jump in. Yeah, these have been a lot of fun here, just kind of like seeing decks that I don't maybe see all that often or have a little bit of a different spin. And so, you know, if you guys are enjoying these, you know, put it down in the comments. I'd love to know if, um, you know, seeing all these kind of best of one standard events, because ideally I want to make it so that I can give you guys sort of an accurate idea. Is this a deck you should craft or not? And you know, is it worth spending your, um, your, your wild cards to get there? And uh, yeah, we'll see. Like if you look at some of my past videos, I was very pleasantly surprised by the Naya humans. That deck seems really powerful. Um, and I don't want to spoil it, but it, it, it's, uh, they did well. Let's leave it at that. All right, opening hand looks great. We've got stuff to do on one, two, and three. Um, yeah, it looks fantastic. Okay, up against Mono Red, they've got the Demonic Ruckus on one. Okay, we'll name Human. Lead out here with the Veteran. And then most likely we'll probably drop Thalia here on two, just because they're gonna be so heavy on the spells. Yeah, they're setting up another Demonic Ruckus. Yeah, and the great thing here is um, with Thalia, this is going to make both of these cost one mana, so that'll be really nice. <coughs> I 
maybe they don't have like another play with fire could potentially shut them down for a turn or at least time walk them a little bit So now I think um, the question is, do we want to run out Adeline or Anim Pakal? Um, I think Adeline is probably the stronger choice here against Mono Red, especially if they have like, you know, Lightning Strike or something ready. Um, yeah. Maybe against other decks, Anim Pakal. It, it can definitely like grow a little bit, but happy to get Adeline going here. Especially since we'll be able to hopefully set up a situation where we can block this code breaker here somewhat soon. And then with Athalia taxing their mana, you know, hopefully we can kind of survive long enough here to try to turn this around. But yeah, they're definitely putting out a lot of uh, a lot of power. <laughs> okay, so now we, with a slick shot show off, we definitely our time is limited here. Uh, we could get a Nimpa call down and start uh, making more guys, and then just try to race them here. Otherwise, Coppercoat Vanguard is kind of nice because that will also pump up our damage output. Um, I guess if we do if we do Vanguard, we're pushing. If we were to like full send, we'd be pushing three, five, seven, thirteen. So not quite enough. I think maybe I'll go with the Anim Call because it's a bit more mana efficient, um, and also it'll create an additional creature. And I think we definitely want to hold probably like as many of these creatures back as we can. We don't want to be blocking. Because I think we can set up a turn where like next turn we should just be able to swing for lethal. So I think this turn we probably just send with Adeline here and then just hold these back just to make sure we can get the double block. Yeah, because this way we swing down to 12. I guess whether or not to swing with Estalia is kind of the question. Yeah, I think I will swing with Athalia here and then just leave back the token so that I can double block here with these two if I have to and still have enough to kind of close out the game with everything else. So hopefully the Thalia tax will be enough to prevent us to just die from the Slick Shot show off. I guess if they have like another land here, but they've only got two cards in hand, so I think we probably survive. And then next turn, just throw down one or two copper coats, and that should do it. Okay, so they did have the lightning strike. They're threatening lethal, so we have force blocks here. And then I think, let's see, so if we play one copper coat, oh, we've got two copper coats, so that should be enough. Yeah, even with one, we would have had enough there, but that'll do it. But yeah, now whether or not they had that lightning strike early, I think definitely like in that situation though, playing out the Adeline first is correct. Um, just because that four toughness is so important in that mono red matchup. 
Want to know? Uh, yeah, opening hand looks great. No two drop, but we do have a one and we've got three mana ready to go. So that feels pretty good. Gonna lead out the courtyard here um, just in case they have like counter mana and we can like lull them into like leaving counter mana up and then use cavernous souls. Just a minor thing there, but um, I try not to run out the cavern prematurely if I can avoid it. I wouldn't play like a pain land first, just you know, to save like life, but if I can naturally kind of flow into playing the cavern a bit later, um, we can but almost you know, we can like maybe time walk like an Azorius control player for one turn. Again, a super minor point, but just wanted to share my thought process. Uh, and it looks like it is Azorius control, so that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, so now I guess let's just drop courtyard number two. Okay, so since they didn't play um, untapped land, we can save the cavern for next turn. So I think here, let's just get... I think here actually a Nympa Call is gonna be slightly better to get going since we're, we're not as worried about the, um, you know, burn that kind of removal. So let's get a Nympa Call going. This is also nice in case they have lockdown. So we, only half of our creatures are hit by it. All right, and they had to go for the throat. It is what it is. Now we'll get the Adeline going. Um, I think we might want to hold the officer just in case they have like a board wipe on four. Let's see. So yeah, next turn, if we play Ishin and they don't do anything, we'll have enough here for lethal. That'll push this up to a, a six. So I guess if we think that they don't have the board wipe on four um, or a lockdown, we could play officer here. Um, it is kind of putting everything out there, but like if they haven't got the depopulate or the lockdown, we could just win on the spot. Eh, you know, I think I'm gonna go for it. Not sure if it's right, but I think there's enough upside since like Esper probably tries to to wipe board wipe on four, that now we can um, just try to get there. So now, if they have like um, Wandering Emperor here or another removal, we're only going to be pushing for potentially six. Ishin would get us a little more. Um, Kind of like holding like the value here. Because we have, like if they've got nothing or if they just have like Anchorage, I think I'm just gonna hold actually. Otherwise I suppose we could go Inti and then have Get Lost. Does that meaningfully change things here? I think I'm just gonna push with what I've got and then hold up Get Lost. Binder. 
All right, so we just get lost in response. Get that out of the way. Nice. Yeah, so being a little aggressive there, you know, like reading that they didn't have depopulate, you know, that definitely allowed us to close it out in that one turn, avoiding like the turn five board wipe. So yeah, I guess you have to be like calculated, but also a little risky. <laughs> I don't know. I, I always kind of try to like second guess and overthink myself with like the control matchups and whatnot, but two and oh. Uh, yeah, opening hand looks great. We've got stuff to do. Three land. All right, up against another human player. Is it mono white? Is it Boros? Looks like mono white. As we play our own Thalia here, it does make our get lost more expensive, but I think being able to threaten their Thalia back is nice. So this way, if they want to push, we can at least trade Thalias. Aaron is pretty nasty. Oof, and they've got Brutal Cathar ready. That's good. Guess we can just get lost after the fact. Um, So yeah, here more than happy to trade Thalia's. Um, the other consideration would be trading for Initiate. That would leave us with no board. So I think we just trade Thalia's here because this way we can get lost to Brukathar and then attack with Veteran to start getting a little bit of value. Um, yeah. Now we even have copper coat, which is great. They do have their own copper coat and Yeah, those tokens might come back to, to bite us a little bit. But I, I still think that, yeah, the versatility of Get Lost is pretty nice. It is certainly rougher in these matchups with creatures, though. I will say that. Now the question is, like, are we open to trading Adeline 
for like veteran plus initiate. I think we are. I think we're okay with that. Um, and then just, I think it's actually even fine just like sending both the token and the veteran. Like they can profitably block one of them, but can bring back bring back a flyer here. We're gonna have an extra human token anyways, and just pushing damage feels pretty good. So I think I'm okay with that. Yeah, and like trading that for Night Errant's not amazing, but I feel like we just want to like move the dial a little bit on the life total. Okay, we do need to draw a couple cards here though. This is getting a little rough. I think here we're happy trading like our three ones in veteran and just trying to like maybe start taking it to the air. So next turn, if they just play recruiter and push three, six, nine, or four, seven, 10, 13, 16. Yeah, I mean, we'd have to block, but I think pressuring them here is pretty good. Warden is nasty, though, I will say that. Yeah, this might be where those uh, get lost kind of come back to bite us here with the, like, it's, it's so bad against uh, humans if they've got, like, Initiate and Warden. Kind of thought that they'd be putting those tokens on the Warden, to be honest, so a little bit surprised there. But, I mean, that's good for us. We'd rather have it be, like, a big creature on the ground. Yeah, because, I mean, that Warden could now be in the air. Oof, it's kind of brutal. Um, I feel like this is a deck that might really, like, especially with the land count, maybe running some number of, like, Intrepid Adversary, because that would be so good right here. Um, so, yeah, we just sit now. Oof, double recruiter, that's brutal. Uh, that's probably game, right? Let's see, we can block the seven, the five, and the four. Then we're taking, actually, seven, five, five. We're taking four, eight, 12, 15, 19. I guess we don't just die. <laughs> um, all right. 
this takes us to one. I think we're still just dead, though. Yeah, that's definitely not going to do it. A little bit too much land. Um, to get lost hurt a little bit. Two and one. Also, I think just the lack of interaction is potentially a problem. Like, there's only f four pieces of removal in the... I suppose they have six with the two Iganjos. So, yeah, like, six pieces of removal in the entire deck. Feels a little light. Hand looks good, though. Got a nice one, two, three here. Maybe can make something happen. Well, you played a Phoenix chick. I assume you're attacking. That's a nice pickup. And again, here against Mono Red, we'll probably play the Adeline before the Anemba calls, just because they're a little bit less uh, less fragile. And like if the opponent spends their turn killing the copper coat here, I'm totally fine with it and like not making more board presence. Then we can still attack in with the veteran, get the extra guy off the Adeline, start gaining some life. I feel like we'll be in a pretty good position. Okay, a little bit of both. That's that's not too bad. Still feel like we're in a pretty good position here, though. And then the next turn, Anim Pakal feels really good. Especially with a veteran in play. See, like, this is another reason why I think they should be running a full play set of veterans. Like, only running two, to me, seems like complete madness. Especially, like, in this kind of meta. Like, it's such a natural combo here with the Adelines and the Impacals. That seems like an odd choice, but okay. So now we just have Adeline take out the Chandra, get an Impacal going. I guess, yeah, actually technically we missed a point there. We could have sent Adeline at face and everything else at the Chandra. Um, so they, they, yeah, could be at 11 here. But we seem to be in a pretty good position, not too worried about this one.
No idea why they didn't attack with Feldon on him, because it's just free cards if we block. Um, but that's okay. And that should basically do it. Yeah, because we've got lethal. Adeline's force blocks. Yeah, definitely the Anipa call plus Adeline is pretty scary. Nice combo there. Three and one. I'm curious to see how like the Ishin plays out and like the Mishra. Um, it, it's kind of cool what they're trying to do to really maximize the Anim Bacalls and the Adelines. Um, the part that like kind of hurts a little bit is that like Night Air and Avios is such a good card that not running it just feels kind of wrong. Um, and like if you're running the full play set of the um, Roaming Thrones, it's like why not run Brutal Cathar? But, yeah. Gives us a turn two play, so I'm not complaining. I guess actually we could have played the Aganja there to miss a point of damage. Uh, it might be relevant here. Having the access to Aganja though is pretty nice, so you could go kind of either way on that. Now I think maybe saving Aganja is probably better. Again, I could see an argument for playing it here. So they're representing Monstrous Rage. Um, I don't know that we actually care. I guess like if we go like Roaming Throne next turn and just take it, we drop to, let's see there, pushing another four. We drop to eight. We play Roaming Throne. We push in for a bunch. We could just go like a Neem plus Officer. I think the fact that we took a little bit of damage here maybe means we should block and make this trade because like we've got an impa call to get there <clears throat> and this just soaks up a bunch of damage so yeah now we're at 13 instead of eight feels pretty good ishin is going to be fun uh now we play the aganjo so i'm kind of thinking maybe we should have played this earlier and then we can go officer plus an impa call I think we push with both. Um, I guess like we could hold these back if we want to block Feldon, but I don't think we want to block Feldon. Do we just try to race here? I really don't love giving them more cards, that's for sure. I think we just I think we just take it and race. Now we can just play Roaming Throne. I 
think we just full send here. We are definitely getting a bit low, but I think that like the ward two on this is pretty important. Highway robbery. Now we have to block Feldon. <clears throat> yeah, okay. So yeah, I think we could have saved ourselves a little bit, a couple life points there by playing the Aganjo earlier. And that, that probably would have been better. Um, but it felt like that was we were in a pretty decent place. Like having access to both the... Um, See, four and one. Having access to both Animpa Call and Adeline felt really good. So <clears throat> I do love what they're doing with that, kind of really pushing that theme. Yeah, opening hand looks great. No one drop. I think they only run six in the deck, though. Okay, so this is like the the deck that I ran yesterday, the Gruel Prowess deck. Um, yikes. Let's go for Kellen, because Kellen can at least block the Kumano. I mean, they, they almost certainly have pump of some kind, but <clears throat> it at least on paper can block a little better. Okay, so they definitely have the Monstrous Rage here. I think we have to just get it out of the way, though. Um, I suppose, like, if we just take it, we can get, like, the Anemba Call going. Problem is, like, we're, we're really on the back foot here. And I feel like we need to, like, they just burn us out. So I think we, I think we actually just try to, like, soak up the damage here. Yeah, we're just like not in a good spot. Now we can play Ishin because it's a 3-4. But we're still, we're dead to a lot of stuff here. I think they just got the jump on us being on the play and this deck is so fast. Like this is another reason why like I want the full play set of Lunar Veteran. So we're gaining some life along the way. And honestly, probably, like, I feel like this deck also really wants some number of Intrepid Adversary, so we can, like, gain some more life. <clears throat> oh, yeah, they've got Rage here, so we're just dead, no matter what. All right, four and two. See if we can push it a little farther. Onelanders are not this deck's friend, that's for sure. Um, yeah, we'll keep this. And then I think here we probably pitch the Roaming Throne. We've got a full play set, so we can probably draw more. And like, being the most expensive card. <clears throat> I 
All right. Get our officer on the table. They might have the cut down here. I guess not, but either way, just getting it going. Binding negotiation, what does this do? Let's see, could we have used the uh, the journey on? I don't think so, not with this. Yeah, I think if we had the other type, like I think if we had the, the courtyard, we would have been able to do it. Lily is good. Huh. Um, I guess we get rid of the... Hmm. Like, if they have... Shelly, we definitely want to get lost. I don't know. This is tough. Because that will just brick wall us, right? I hate losing this value, though. Yeah, I think it's probably just the wise thing to do, hold to get lost. So here, I think an Impa call goes a bit harder, so I think we can lose the Adeline. I don't know if that's right against black. Um, I feel like like the the toughness is less important than it is against like mono red. Kellen is definitely doing some work. That's for sure. Do they have the board wipe is the question. Okay, so now we can pitch the officer. And then just use get lost to clean this up. and then just push for a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's looking pretty good right now. Although if they have like board wipe on five, it's pretty bad. No board wipe though, it feels good. That's gotta be game, right? Yeah. Guess let's put this on the veteran. Yeah, that's gonna do it. There's Mishra. All right, still in it to win it. Five and two. Can we get there? Uh, yeah, opening hand looks sweet. Got a nice one, or I guess, yeah, yeah, we do actually have a one. We can use Secluded Courtyard for Kellen to do Journey On into Kellen or NT into Adeline. Yeah, this feels pretty good. Wait a second, isn't that supposed to... Oh, you know what, maybe I have it backwards. Maybe it's the Cavern of Souls that lets you do it. That's probably what it is. Huh. Oh well. Yeah, got that backwards, that's okay. 
Um, I guess let's go. Let's go Kellen here, I think. They both die to cut down is the real answer, but. Just trying to think which one like I wanted to have later. Ooh, that's a nice one. Um, yeah, I guess we just do that and just see if Adeline sticks. It probably doesn't, but you never know. is pretty sweet um man do i want to go copper coat plus inti or do we want to just go roaming throne here i kind of like roaming throne doesn't push quite as much damage but it's like kind of more of a setup card i guess if they have the removal like in response that's pretty bad but I guess they didn't have it. Yeah, I guess I'm not sure how I'd play that, that turn out. I feel like this is pretty good. It's also a little, little softer, or a little better to a Path of Peril, I think. Shelly. Uh, sure. Oof. So we can just go like ENT plus Copper Coat. Make give this thing trample. That feels really good. Otherwise, if we go like double Copper Coat, like they block here, we're pushing two or three. Yeah, they're they're just dead. Never mind. Doesn't matter. That'll work. They're super dead. Nice. Six and two. Final boss. Can we do it and win out? I like the deck so far. I, I definitely really like what it's doing with like all of the kind of the top end. Um, Adeline's and the and the Inti feels good, even though I guess we haven't really used Inti much, but like the threat of it was real. Um, the Nipa calls are great. And the Roaming Throne was also nice. I guess like the full playset of Roaming Throne, I'm not sure about, but maybe like if you're really pushing this agenda, it's good. Uh, let's get into going. I think we maybe just pitch a Roaming Throne here. Ah, uh, boo hiss. Losing an Impa call sucks, but yeah, getting closer to uh, to land feels good though. Okay, I'll bite. They almost certainly have like removal though. Hmm. Is it better to just like attack and then like see what we draw into? That might be better. 
Because like, I feel like they either 100% counter on the Impacal or just kill it. And then I guess like we're still pushing a decent amount here. So. so maybe it's better to just play it. Man, I don't know. Yeah, I guess I'm just going to go for it. It's like if they kill it, then like we at least have like this stuff going. Sure. I don't think we discard a card here though. So I think we like attack, wait for them to do stuff, and then get lost in response. Question is like if they're gonna block first. Cause there's probably other stuff they can do with their mana. So like we'll lose a little bit of damage. But I think it's worth it. And I don't really know that I wanna get rid of this Cavern of Souls, but it's probably right to get the trample going. I think I want the counter on NT. It's like recruitment officer is also good. Maybe I should have put it on officer. I'm not sure. I think we we let them block and then try to blow them out if they use their so probably to try to make it like a 3-3 death touch otherwise I guess we just get rid of it and then like if they have counters it sort of sucks ooh mastermind Okay, now we can get rid of the sleeper. I guess we trade with the officer. We're a little bit low on cards here, but I mean, they're at nine. <sighs> Shelly, yuck. Kind of want to start drawing cards. I mean, Rumming Throne is also quite good though. Like Rumming Throne can attack into Shelly next turn, potentially. So maybe that's right. And then just set up. Also, like with the double NT trigger is pretty sweet. Kaito. Hmm. Man, Shieldred is really a pretty sick combo for NT. <laughs> Oh, good lord. We're going to be taking a lot of damage here. Oh, never mind. It was, we were not drawing it, so we're just exiling it. That's, that's different. 
Um, okay, so if we full send, I guess we can protect Inti with Plaza. I think we just push with Roaming Throne, honestly. Hmm. Like, we could let them, like, eat one of these other guys and then just, like, push with Roaming Throne. I think we just push with Roaming Throne here. Oh god, I just realized we didn't have two cards to discard for. Oh my god, that was so awful. Um, we could have, I suppose, used Officer first. Luckily, we drew the Get Lost, which was just hilarious. But yeah, I, I miss understood that we this would only be a 5-5 five, five. that was gonna be like the absolute nut low <laughs> so it worked out but we didn't really deserve it wow yeah that was pretty bad i guess better lucky than good oh feels bad Yeah, so I, like in hindsight there, if we had used Officer to try to find a second card, then we could have ensured that Roaming Throne would have been big enough. Okay, that's pretty bad. Okay, that was a nice draw. Um... I think we're just killing Kaito this turn. Okay, sleeper. Now we just push face. Um, yeah, I guess Inti makes Roaming Throne get uh, Trample here. Force blocks here, which is nice. We might have got there. The plaza is definitely pretty sweet. Protecting NT. Yeah, so there was definitely a goof earlier on with the uh, NT roaming throne, but yeah, NT is pretty sweet though. All right, we got there, we trophied. Woo, seven and two. Had a couple, um, less than perfect plays but you know this deck was really pretty great um let's get the sweet sweet prizes and then let's take a quick recap here so looking back at the deck like okay what worked so the cards that were sweet roaming throne is really great as like a ward and like pump, pumping everything up um 
Anipa Call was amazing. Adeline was amazing. Definitely loved Copper Coat. Inti, it was very impressed by. Um, I think Thalia is like always good. Um, Kellogg was nice. I don't know that it was. Uh, I don't know. I just, I just like. It's good, however. And I can see why they have it here because of like the whole Ishin thing with Kellen making it better. So it sort of makes sense. Um, Officer, I think, is always you know a good staple here. I did want to see more copies of Veteran. I think that you definitely want a full play set of Veteran for this deck to work optimally. Ishin, um, this is like why they're playing Mardu, right? So it's like just getting more more copies of Roaming Throne. I don't. I don't necessarily know that you need to make this a Mardu deck. I guess you, you certainly can. Like it's sort of down to like how good is Ishin, how good is Mishra. We didn't get to see Mishra in play. That would have been pretty fun. Um, and like the draining out is a real thing. But other than that, it's just kind of like a three five. And it's like if you don't have a name Bacall or Adeline, like it's fine ish. But it's maybe, I don't know, I feel like you could maybe do better. So, like, I like what this deck is doing. I don't know that it needs to be Mardu. Like, maybe this is better off as just, like, a really focused Boros deck where you, like, cut Ishin, cut Mishra, maybe cut Kellen. And then what I would bring in is I would bring in, like, if I were to rebuild it, I'd bring in um, a full play set of Veterans, get lost uh, i have mixed feelings on like i think that the versatility is amazing like obviously you saw it wasn't like it, it didn't actively force us to lose the game against the um, other human deck but it certainly didn't help so maybe a mix of like get lost and like march because march has been amazing uh march of otherworldly light has been amazing in mono white humans um possibly even like a mix of you know depending on like how the lands shake out you could get away with maybe a copy or two of the ossification if you have enough basics otherwise i think getting some some number of um brutal cathars here especially if you're running the roaming thrones could be really good so that would be like some of the big changes that i would make but i think it's a very it's a very cool deck a lot of fun to play i mean you see you know it definitely it got the trophy so it got there um other cards that i really liked the plaza of heroes was nice just having protection felt really good and you know i guess you've got a lot of legendaries here so that sort of like makes it work so maybe you could even in like a boros stack if you were to just do straight boros have some number of those um, i could see them like bringing in something like Skrelv to like help protect the combo um yeah so anyways enjoyed the deck had fun hope you guys enjoyed watching it and we will see you in the next one